Hey everybody, it's Miss A and I'm here with Math in Minutes. We're gonna go over some review um, lessons that we've done the last couple of days. So one of the things that the students worked on was renaming mixed numbers. I get myself situated. And this um, assignment actually went from last Thursday up until Tuesday, and we did something different today. So I'm going to go ahead and get this up. So renaming mixed numbers. So for example, first of all, a mixed number. Let's talk about what that is. A mixed number is a number that contains a whole number and a fraction. So for example, if I have three and five sevenths, this is a mixed number because there are three holes and there is a fraction of five sevenths. So whole number and this is my numerator and this is my denominator. So we worked on two things. We went from renaming a mixed number to a fraction greater than one. And let's get that vocabulary out of there. Fraction greater than one. which is a numerator that is bigger than a denominator. So your numerator is greater than denominator. Uh, for parents, that was previously known as a um, improper fraction, but the vocabulary that we use now is called a fraction greater than one. And this is an example, 13 sevenths. That means that the numerator is greater than the denominator, and that is equivalent to 1 and th 6 sevenths. They are equivalent. They're equal. And the point of this is so that students know that this and this have the exact same value. So we went from a fraction greater than 1, 3 and 5, se or excuse me, we went from a mixed number to a fraction greater than 1, and the children were so shown some different strategies. One of the strategies that they were shown was to make groups. Your whole number tells you how many groups you need to have. One, two, three. And inside your group, your denominator tells you what the whole number should look like in fraction form. So seven sevenths. So if your denominator is seven, you need to have seven sevenths. And we add these pieces together, and then we add our fraction at the end. And once we have that, we can find out, we can rename our mixed number to a fraction greater than one. So three and five sevenths is equivalent to 21, so that's seven plus seven plus seven plus five, which is equal to 21 plus five is 26, and our denominator stays the same. So three and five sevenths is equivalent to 26 sevenths. This was one strategy, this is grouping. The children were also taught a multiplication and addition strategy. So three and five sevenths. What you do is you multiply your whole number times your denominator, and then you add your numerator to get your new numerator. So we write it as W times D plus N. My whole number is three times seven plus five, which is equal to 26, and then my denominator stays the same, seven. So they arrive at the same answer, doing it in two different strategies. We also showed them a number line. <clears throat> so the number line strategy, and I'm gonna do a smaller number just for purposes. Let's do one and four, six. All right, I start my number line with my one hole. I know one hole is equal to six, six, so I would start my number line at six, six. And then I would go seven, six, eight, six, nine, six, oops, nine, six, 10, six, 11, six. So I would keep going that way, and I have my one hole here, I circle my holes, and then my numerator tells me how many jumps I'm going to make. So I start it here, wherever my last hole was, one, two, three, and four. Where I end is my fraction greater than one. So one and four, six is equivalent to 10, six. Now the children have a choice of what strategy they want to use. They're not limited to, they don't have to use one in particular. They just have to master the renaming process. 
Now, that was for renaming from a mixed number to a fraction greater than one. Now we have to go to the other direction. We have to rename from a fraction greater than one, let's say 12 eighths, and we need to turn that into a mixed number. So one of the strategies, and this is the one where the number line actually works out pretty well for the kids. We always start off at zero and whatever our denominator is, and we go to whatever our mixed number is, 12 eighths. So every number in between, because these should go uh, chronologically by numbers, so, and it doesn't matter. The good thing about this is spacing doesn't matter because we're not using it to compare, we're using it to find the answer, to rename. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You see how they're not perfect, but that's okay. And then I just label each one of these. And all of these are eighths. All right, so now I look through my number line and I find my whole number and the children know they look for that denominator and they all have that denominator and the numerator has to match. So here's my whole. And if there was more than um, two holes, we would count eight from here. So one, two, three, four. So there's not two holes. We put our finger here. How many um, numbers are circled prior to our finger is how many holes. So there's one hole. And then we look at how many jumps it takes to get to the hole to where our finger is. One, two, three, and four. That becomes our numerator and denominator stays the same. So that is the number line strategy with changing from a, or renaming from a fraction greater than one to a mixed number. We also had where we can subtract out the holes. So eight tells us how many we're subtracting because that's our hole. So we subtract eight eighths. And I usually circle it to help me remember, okay, that was a whole number. 12 minus 8 is 4, and my denominator stays the same. This is a fraction, so I'm good. I have one whole, because there's one number chained, one number circled, and then my leftover fraction is 4 eighths. These were the two strategies that the children were shown for renaming. And these will help us with our assignments that we'll be working on where we're adding and subtracting mixed numbers and having to rename in order to do that. Thanks for watching, everybody.